And if you have your word, please stand and turn with me to the book of 2 Kings, chapter number 6. 2 Kings, chapter number 6. A very familiar text. And I believe this word is going to really bless someone on today. First Sunday, I believe this word is going to really encourage you. You're not here today by accident or coincidence. You are here to hear this word. Amen. The enemy didn't want me to stand here today and preach this word. My, my, my body is a little bit tired, but my mind is sharp right All now. Right. Amen. 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 No, it is a lie. I'm, I'm, I'm here to preach this word. All right. Yes. 2 Kings chapter 6, verse, verses number 1 through 7. And it reads as follows. It says, And the sons of the prophet said to Elijah, Behold now, the place where we dwell with thee is too straight for us. Let us go, we pray thee unto Jordan, and take thence every man a beam, and let us make us a place there where we may dwell. And he answered, Go ye. And one said, be content, I pray thee, and go with thy servants. And he answered, I will go. So he went with them, and when they came to Jordan, they cut down wood. But as one was felling a beam, the axe head fell into the water, and he cried and said, Alas, master, for it was borrowed. And the man of God said, Where fell it? And he showed him the place. And he cut down a stick and cast it in thither, and the iron did swim. Therefore said he, Take it up to thee. And he put out his hand and took it. Let us pray. But we thank you, Father, for who you are and all that you do for us. Lord, today as I stand here and proclaim your word, please decrease all of me and increase all of you. Yes, God. Holy Spirit, as always, have your way. It's in Jesus' name that we do pray. Amen. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. If you're taking notes on today, I'm coming from the title, What Goes Down Must Come Up. What Goes Down Must Come Up. The law of gravity says that what goes up, it must come down. Uh, so if something were to, to, to go up in the air, eventually it's going to have to come back down to the ground. If I was to, to take this, this towel and throw it up, it, it, it will come down. That's the law of gravity. What, what, what goes up, it, 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 it comes down. It, it's not going to never take in the air, but it's going to... It's going to come down. If you were to, to toss anything up in the air, it's going to eventually come down. Well, whatever you may, whatever you may have. You know, we're, we're not in outer space. We're here on earth. So if something goes up, it's going to come. That, that's the law of gravity. Yes. But God, he, he's the creator of gravity. And he, he knows all things. And sometimes God will do things in reverse. Here in the text, we see a group of prophets here. Um, the leaders, or the leader of these prophets was a man by the name of Elijah. Uh, Elisha was the, the mentee or the protege of Elijah. Um, so Elisha was a, a true man of God. He walked in integrity. He, he wasn't perfect, but he exemplified godly characteristics. Mm -hmm. He walked in the authority and the power that God had bestowed upon him. Mm -hmm. He also had influence. The Bible says that Elisha had a school where he was uh, training up the next group of leaders. Mm -hmm. He was pouring into them how to be men of God. Mm -hmm. He was training them on how to, to hear the voice of the Lord. Verse 1, it tells us that the, the sons of the prophets, they were, they were in this place and they ran out of room where they were at. Uh, 
more and more prophets were, were coming in, and as they were coming in to train up under Elijah, they, they lost some space, or the space uh, began to be inadequate for them. It was too small. It, it was cramped. Uh, so they, they felt like they were limited, and they had to move. And because of all of this, verse 2, watch this, it says, Let us go, we pray thee, unto Jordan, and take thence every man a beam, and let us make us a place there, where we make well, and he answered, Go ye. So here we can see the sons of the prophets, Grace Center, they, they are asking Elijah for permission to leave their cramped quarters. Elijah, he gives them permission to go. In other words, he told them to, to go out and to grow and to expand and to take the current limitations off of your life. And Grace Center, that's what God will sometimes tell us. He'll tell us to, to go and expand and take the limitations off of your life. And we have to learn, Grace Center, to take God out of the box. Amen. Amen. A lot of us have placed God in a box, and God is like, I don't want to be in a box. I'm too big to be in a box. I'm, I want to do more things for you. I want to, I want to make sure your life is limitless, not just limited. I want you, I want you to grow and expand and do things in life so don't hold me or try to contain me in a box right. if you feel cramped in or caged in and if you feel like you know there's no place for you to go we need to call on God mm -hmm. God is saying you need to take the limitations off of me mm -hmm. Ephesians 3 and 20 says this in the King James it says now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. The Amplified Version says it like this. It says, now to him who by in consequence of the action of his power that is at work within us is able to carry out his purpose and do super abundantly. Far over and above all that we dare ask or think infinitely beyond our highest prayers, desires, thoughts, hopes, or dreams. That's the way we should think about God. That he can do super abundantly more than we can even think of. We have to take him out of the box. The world may place you in a box, but don't even dare place your God in a box. Amen. This word power here in Ephesians 3.20 is where we get the Greek word dunamis. Mm -hmm. It's also where we get the current word today as dynamite. Mm -hmm. It's that explosive type of power that God has placed into each and every one of us. There is a, is a spiritual, supernatural power, Grace Center, on the inside of the believer. Amen. That will have the believer tap into a side of them that allows them to accomplish great feats. Yes. Elijah told them to, to go and to expand and take the current limitations off of their lives. Mm -hmm. One of the prophets in verse number three, he, he asked Elijah to go with them. And without hesitation, Elijah agreed to go. And Grace Center, that's, that's just like God. Whenever you are stepping into new territory, and whenever we are doing things to get out of our comfort zone, we have to remember that we're not in this alone. Watch this. One of the sons of the prophet asked Elijah to go, and he gave them permission. But then another prophet asked Elijah uh, 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 to go with them and Elijah said I will go with you Elijah demonstrated what God is like Elijah demonstrated what Christ is like it reminds me of the story in Mark chapter 5 it's a story of uh, Jesus getting off the boat 
And when he gets off the boat, a man by the name of Jairus comes to Jesus to heal his sick daughter. Mm -hmm. When the man came to Jesus, as Jesus getting off the boat, he asked Jesus to come with him. Mm -hmm. When you go back and read that story, Jesus does not say anything to the man. He just began to go. Mm -hmm. He doesn't respond to the man. He just began to go. Watch this. When we go to God and ask God, God to come with us, he'll go with us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Even in that story, there were interruptions and distractions when Jesus was going to Jairus' house to heal his daughter. If you know the story, as Jesus was on his way to Jairus' house, the one with the issue of blood decided to interrupt the scene. Mm -hmm. she, she, she interrupted the scene by pulling the hem of Jesus' garment and she was healed. And when she did that, Jesus looked around and said, who touched me? Mm -hmm. All of the disciples were like, well, Jesus, everybody out here is touching you. What, what are you talking about? He's like, no, somebody pulled some virtue from me. And, and, and when, when that happened, Jesus saw the woman who touched him. And then after all of that, watch this, after all of that, the woman told Jesus, the Bible says that she gave him the whole story. It's a woman talking, so you know she's been there for a, whole, a, a long time. <laughs> the Bible says that, that, that the woman told Jesus the whole story. How she went from doctor to doctor to doctor, and no one could heal her. No one could, could, could cure her of her disease. But at the same time, Jesus began the journey with Jairus. But here you have somebody steps into the scene and interrupts Jesus. They are a scene breaker. They have, they have come in. Jesus is on his way to Jairus' house. He has a dire situation. His daughter is about to die, but somebody comes in and interrupts Jesus. How would you feel if somebody interrupts Jesus from coming to see you? She, she interrupts the scene, but Jesus does eventually make it to Jairus' house. But even here in this story, in this particular story right here, Elijah agreed to go with his prophets. <laughs> he was demonstrating what God is like. He was demonstrating what Christ is like. And grace said, when God starts the journey with you, God finishes the journey with you. Amen. That was so nice. Let me say that twice. When God starts the journey with you, mm -hmm. God is going to finish the journey with you. God does not begin to walk with you and then leave you. God does not start something and say, you know what? I want you to finish it. No, when God starts the journey with you, he's going to finish the journey with you. If he makes a promise to you, he's going to keep the promise. Elijah said, I'm going to, I'm going to go with you. Amen. The Bible says that Elijah, he, he went with his servants and he went with them uh, to the Jordan. Um, and when they get there, Grace said, they began to cut down trees. Um, they were cutting down trees to build a bigger school. And as they were cutting down trees, something happened. Something happened when they were cutting down the trees. Verse number five, it says, But as one was felling a beam, the axe head fell into the water. And he cried and said, Alas, master, or oh, master, for it was borrowed. Let me paint the picture here just so you can get a clear picture of what is taking place. They're out there building a school um, to, to house more prophets that were coming in to train up under the prophet Elijah. As they're out there just building and, and cutting down trees and so forth, um, they're, they're probably all talking and probably laughing. They probably telling knock knock jokes. They they probably do all kind. Of, they they probably talking about your mama this, your mama that. They they having a good old time out there just cutting down trees. <laughs> it was probably a beautiful day like it is today, just having a good old time cutting down trees, doing kingdom work. Mm -hmm. Do a kingdom work. Just, just cut it down trees. Building a school, minding their own business, cutting down trees. And 
as they're, as they're cutting down trees, something happened. The word says that the axe head flew off one of the, the axes and it went into the water. And it only happened to one of them. Not more than one, but just one. So all of the attention <laughs> was on the one person that the axe head flew off. The Bible says that the servant cried out to Elijah. This word, alas, is in the Hebrew, it means, it means pain. He said, alas, master, or your translation may say, oh, master. That Hebrew word, it means, it means pain. It means to mourn. It means to grieve. The servant, he, he realized that he was in trouble for losing the axe head. Not only that, losing the axe head, it would have put him in debt to the owner. So when he cried out, he was crying out in pain. He was crying out in agony. He was crying out in distress. He was grieving. He was mourning. And he knew that he was going to be in debt to the owner of the axe head. Knowing this, he, he knew he could not bear it. He knew that pressure was on him. And the only thing this servant was doing, great sin, he was just simply working for the Lord. The only thing this servant was doing, he was just trying to build the kingdom. He wasn't causing anyone any harm. He was just minding his own business, and then all of a sudden, he loses something that's valuable that's not even his. He actually had to borrow something that he could not afford, and then he lost it. Something like this happened to me the other day. I was um, on the other side of town, and... Um, I, I, I've been to this store before, but I parked in a different place. And I, I, I got there, I went inside the store, um, got what I needed to get, and when I, when I came out of the store, I'm, I'm going to my car, and I notice my car is not in the parking lot. I'm like, now, what? I'm, I'm, I'm looking, and I'm, I said, well, don't, don't, don't panic. Don't, don't panic, CJ. Just walk down this aisle. Walk down one aisle, didn't see the car. Walk down another aisle, didn't see the car. Went further over, walked down another aisle, didn't, didn't see the car. Walked a little bit further and looking all around. Just, just looking all around the park, I did not see the car. I'm like, oh, Lord, I got to call the police. I got to do that. What did I have in the car? Did I have my weapon? I, yeah, I got a weapon. Did I have my firearm in the car? No, I ain't got the firearm. I had it right here in my car. <laughs> yeah, but I was like, I was like, what, what, what happened to my car? So I said, CJ, just, just walk, just walk, walk, walk further, walk further. So I, I walked to the other side of the parking lot, and and lo and behold, <laughs> that little old car was on the other side of the parking lot. I'm like, oh man, I'm, I'm thinking I had to call the police. I got to, I got to do this and do that. It's a beautiful day. I got to, got to go through all, all this type of stuff on today. I thought I had lost the V. I'm like, man, let me got to get a, note, a whole nother car, get a car note. You know, all these things was running through my head because I thought I lost the car. If that ever happened to you before? You, you, you thought you lost something only to, to figure out that you placed it in the wrong place? It, it's, it's happened to me plenty of times. Yeah. Well, here in this story, this, this, this man, he, this servant, this prophet, he lost the axe head and it wasn't even his to begin with. The, the Bible says that the axe head fell into the water. What was valuable is now lost. What was valuable to the servant is now gone. The axe head, it, it, it slips off the axe and it goes into the water. Now watch this. The water cannot support the axe head. The axe head is too heavy for the water. Water can hold boats. Water can hold rafts. Water can hold a sponge, but water cannot hold an axe head. 
Grace said that sometimes the pressure of life is too heavy for anyone to hold. Yeah, preach on it. Yeah, yeah, that's right. It, 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 it seems like everything that you even place in your hands sometimes just slip off. Your, your job is too heavy. Your health issues are too heavy. The issues with your kids are too heavy. Your finances are too heavy. Sometimes life itself can just be too heavy sometimes. And, and sometimes when, when life gets too heavy, you have to do like this servant did, just cry out to the master and say, Oh, master! That, that, that's how he cried out. It wasn't just a Oh, master. He cried out in agony. And he was in pain. He was grieving over the loss of something valuable that he had lost. He said, oh, master. Sometimes great sinner, when you're going under, you got to say, oh, master. When life is weighing you down, you got to say, oh, master. When there are other people even around you that saw the axe head go to the water, you don't care about the other people. You say, oh, master. Because sometimes we'll come to church and act like we got it going on. I like everything is fine. My week was perfect. My bills are paid. No bill collectors calling me. I got perfect health. I got perfect relationships. I love my ball. I love this. I, my kids are, per, are straight A students. But sometimes you know when you come to church, you just got to say, oh, master. Yes, Lord. Yeah. Oh, 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 master. I'm in pain. I'm in agony. I don't know what I'm going to do. Sometimes you got to cry out to him. Yes, if you don't do it in church, at least do it at home. Do it somewhere. Do it in your old prayer closet. But just scream out, oh, oh, master. Oh, master. Yes. Sometimes we got to lay flat on our face in a prostrate position and say, oh, master. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. I don't know what to do. I don't know where to go. I don't know how I'm going to pay these bills. I don't know how these kids are going to graduate from school. I don't know how I'm going to do this. I don't know where I'm going to get my next paycheck from. Oh, master. Yeah, yeah. The doctor told me I have this incurable disease and so I got six months to live. Oh, master. Jesus. Sometimes you got to cry out to the master. This servant was crying out to Elijah. But when we look at the text, we know that we can cry out to our God. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. He said, oh, oh, master. The Bible said that Elijah, he he asked the servant a question. He asked the servant, he said, uh, where did the axe head fall? He said, where did the axe head fall? Mm -hmm. I told this story before, but years ago when I had knee surgery, um, as they were uh, wheeling me back into the surgery room, um, they, they, they stopped me right before we went to the room, and the doctor looked at me and said, um, which knee are we operating on? I was kind of confused at the time. Because I'm like, you the doctor. You asking me which knee? Should you already know this? You know, working on the wrong knee. But but when when I when I point to my knee, he said, I just need it for you to tell me. Yeah. Come on, come on. You see, sometimes God mm -hmm. wants you to tell him yeah, yeah, yeah. where you're hurting. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he already knows. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's good. That's good to me right now. The doctor already knows yeah. where you're hurting. Yeah, yeah. He just wants you yeah. to tell him mm -hmm. where it hurts. He's like, where did you call me? that old master. I'm here. Now, where are you hurting at? I heard you call my name. You said, oh, master, I showed up. Now, tell me, where is the axe head? Where are you hurting at? What bill needs to be paid? What relationship needs to be restored? What job do you want? What career you trying to you trying to get into? What school do you want to apply for? I heard you call my name. You said, oh, master, well, I'm here on the scene. Now, tell me. What do you need now that I'm here? Oh, oh, master. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. The servant, he, he showed Elijah where the axe head fell. Mm -hmm. and, and, and Elijah, what he did was, great son, he, he took a stick and he, he placed the stick in the water. 
and, and we placed the stick in the water, the Bible says the, the axe head, it, it came up. It was, it was once down in the water, but when Elijah took a stick, just, just, just a stick, no power in the stick, but just a regular old stick. He took the stick, placed the stick in the water. The Bible says that the axe head came up that was in the water. In other words, the axe head floated on water. Ah, uh, yeah. The, the, the axe head, what was what was down, eventually came back up. Uh, so, so watch this. Even when the axe head was down, it didn't stay down. The axe head went under, uh -huh. but it didn't stay under. All right. God defied mm -hmm. the law of gravity yeah. and yeah. provided yeah. a miracle. Yeah. Thank you. Right. Yeah. Yeah. This, this, this was a miracle. Mm -hmm. There is no way an axe head should have risen up to the surface. It was just a stick. Mm -hmm. No power in the stick. Mm -hmm. Stick didn't have no power. Elijah really didn't have power. He only had the power that God gave to him. Yeah, yeah. So everything came from God. Yeah. Watch this. A miracle cannot happen without God being involved in it. Yeah. Without God being involved in it, a miracle cannot happen. Because all miracles, it comes via God. Yeah. It comes by way of God. God is like, if you want a miracle, I'm the only one that's delivering miracles. Yes. I am the delivery man for miracles. Yes. I'm better than UPS, FedEx, or whatever else kind of delivery service you can think of. I am the deliverer of miracles. Yes. This was a miracle that an axe head would float to the surface. Grace said, what goes down, yeah. it must come up. That's right. Whatever you lost, you can recover. Uh -huh. uh, there, look, there are some steps, some steps to get you out of your situation that we can take from this story. Watch this. Here are some steps to get out of your situation. The first thing we can do is that we can cry out to God. Uh -huh. The servant said, oh, master. So if you're in a situation, cry out to God. Yes. There were other servants there. He didn't call on the other servants. He called on the master. He called on Elijah, which was a representation. He was the mouthpiece of God. Uh -huh. Okay? So when we're in a situation, cry out to God. Yes. Yes. The next thing we must do is tell God what you need. Mm -hmm. He said the axe head is borrowed. Mm -hmm. It's not mine. It is borrowed. So we cry out to God and we tell God what we need. Not only do we cry to God and tell God what we need, but we need to be specific in what we tell God. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Don't be general. That's right. No, tell God exactly what you need. Mm -hmm. Elijah says, that, where did the axe head fall? Mm -hmm. He didn't ask the servant, okay, it fell in the water somewhere. No, the servant told him exactly where it fell. Uh -huh. When we pray to God, be specific in our prayers. Amen. The last and final thing is this, Grace Center. Allow God to go to work on your behalf. Yes. If you cry out to him, if you tell him what you need, if you're specific in your prayers, allow God to go to work on your behalf. Amen. Stop stressing. Yeah. Stop pacing the floor. Mm -hmm. Stop calling everybody up on that on, on the phone. Stop, stop tweeting and, and posting. No, trust God. Allow God. To go to work on your behalf. Yes, yes. When God goes to work on your behalf, He's able to do things that your natural ability will not be able to do. God can do things in the supernatural mm -hmm. that will boggle our minds. Amen. If the servant could have got his own axe head, he would have. Mm -hmm. But he could not do it. If we could get ourselves out of our own situations, we would, but we cannot sometimes. That's what we need to call on God. We need to let God be God. Yes. God is the best one at being himself. Mm -hmm. There is no God but the almighty God, the unlimited 
Father. There's only one. Despite what other people say, there's only one God. One. Let God be God. Yes. But Grace said, there's more to the story. I'm not done. There, 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 there's more to the story. All right. God used Elijah to produce this miracle. But God also wanted to use the servant in the miracle. Mm -hmm. Verse 7, it says, Therefore said he, Take it up to thee. And he put out his hand and took it. Mm -hmm. Elijah told the servant to take the axe head that was lost. Mm -hmm. Now, this is a miracle, first of all, with the axe head flowing. So Elijah wanted the servant to pick up the axe head. Mm -hmm. In other words, he wanted the man to participate in the miracle. Mm -hmm. Grace said there are some things and sometimes God wants us Amen. to participate in the miracle that we're asking for. I like that. Yeah, yeah. God, God could have caused the axe head to leap out of the water onto dry ground. He could have done that. But, but Elijah asked the man, he said, no, no, no. Tell where it fell at. He took a stick and he, 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 he placed the axe head on the stick and he said, now, you take it. In other words, watch this. We sometimes have to participate, watch this, and receive the miracles of God. Yeah. Yeah. We have to open up our uh, our mind says to receive what yes. God is trying to do for us. Yes. What would have happened if the servant just said, well, thank you for getting it, but you can drop it over there. <laughs> he took and he received the miracle. Mm -hmm. There are certain miracles that God wants to do in your lives. Uh -huh. And he wants you to participate in the miracle. Yes. A miracle cannot happen without God being involved. And I believe that some miracles are going to happen in the lives of his people in this place today. Yeah, yeah. What goes down, Grace Center, cannot stay down. And I know we talk about different things, but sometimes we can even mess up ourselves and we can, ourselves can go down. Uh -huh. Our shortcomings, our, our mistakes. The Bible says that a righteous man or woman will fall seven times. But guess what? Else? They may fall down seven times, but the Bible says they will rise up again. Yes, yes, yes. So if you have fallen down, you can get back up. Amen. No matter what sin you may have committed, Amen. no matter how far you have drifted away from the river banks, uh -huh. if you have fallen down, you can get back up again. Amen. What goes down is able to come up. I told you to find all gravity. When we serve a God yeah. who defies all laws, yeah. scientific and natural. He is the creator. He is the alpha and the, the omega, yeah. the beginning and the end. What goes down must come up. Right, yeah. Your health may be down today, but it's going to come back up. Yeah. Your finances may be down today, yeah. but it'll yeah. come back up. Right. Your mindset may be down today, yeah. but it can come back up. What goes down, it, it must come up. Yes. That's the God that we serve. Yes. Don't stay down if you're down. Mm -hmm. You can get back up again. There was a commercial back in the day, these old, these old people falling down saying, I can't get back up. Well, with God, with God, we can get back up again. If we fall short, we can get back up again. Don't listen to the voice of the enemy that's telling you, you will never be able to get back up from what you fell into. Amen. Mm. That's a lie from the pits of hell. Yes, we serve a God that can lift you up even yes. when you made the mistake. Yes. When you fell short, uh -huh. you went to the place, you, you cursed the person out, you lied on this and lied on that. You said, you said oh master, uh -huh. <laughs> forgive me, cleanse me, help me in my situation. And God can take his supernatural stick mm -hmm. and reach down yes. and pull us up. Oh, that's up. That, I just got something fresh off the press. It's not on my note. All right. Over 2,000 years ago, he took his stick. All right. Hey. All right. All right. <laughs> okay, I got to go. I got to go. He took his stick. Yeah. See, Elijah used a stick made of wood. Mm -hmm. 
but Christ also used some sticks out of wood. <laughs> and then he went down for three days. And he told the enemy, I'm down here today, but I'm not going to stay down. But I have to go down myself so that when my people go down, <laughs> they can look at me and say, you know what? If Jesus went down for me, I don't have to stay down. If he went down, I don't have to stay down. He went down for me, so I don't have to stay down. He went down to the pits of hell for me, so I don't have to stay down. But you know, he didn't stay down because on that third day, as the Baptists would say, he died on Friday. Yes. Stayed in the grave all night Friday. Yeah. Yeah. All day Saturday. Yeah. But early. Yeah. Early. Yeah. Early. Yeah. early Sunday morning. Yeah. Yeah. He got back up again. Yeah. I like that right there. Yeah. I got half a whole new sermon. I got no fresh yeah. open fresh. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Oh, Master. Yeah. What goes down yeah. would not stay down. Yeah. 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 Are down. Anyone who is feeling down. Anyone who is feeling down. Anyone who is feeling down. I feel that right there. Anyone who is feeling down. You don't have to stay down. God will not keep you down. God will not. Watch this. Elijah did not keep the axe head in the water. God will not keep you in the water. God will not drown you. God will pick you up when you're drowning. Yeah. God will reach down and, and pick you up when you feel like yeah. you cannot go in first. Come on. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Let me close. I'm about to preach the yeah. paint off the wall. Thank you, Lord. Uh, Hallelujah. What Jesus. goes down yes. must come up. God can defy mm -hmm. the law of gravity. God yes. can defy what anyone may be saying about mm -hmm. you. What it looks like is is down and is dead and it cannot be resurrected mm -hmm. all things are possible with Jesus Christ yes. I'm so glad I serve yes. I will serve another God yes. if you can come die and rise again I'll think about it <laughs> but until that day I'm serving Jesus Christ Hallelujah. he came he went down but he rose again yes. if you're feeling down yourself just know this what goes down, yes. it must come up. Amen.